We're in the Canary Islands. After sailing for five and a half days or around 600 nautical miles to get here from the Mediterranean Sea. It felt so good to have successfully completed the first leg of the Atlantic crossing. It was also really nice to be able to make breakfast that morning without having to hold on to something constantly. It's the simple things in life. We landed at a small island called La Graciosa, where we'd spend a few days resting and recovering before exploring some more islands on our way to Grand Canaria. Of course, no big sailing trip ends without a curveball being thrown our way. We noticed some line dragging behind our boat on the last day of our passage, so Jace had an important job to complete before we could really celebrate our arrival. All right, time to assess the damage. We probably could do with these on, hey? Poor Jason Come can't on. find his wetsuit. It's gone missing, so I'm pretty sure it's been lost off the side of the boat at some point. Oh well. It's gonna be cold. I think our water temps here are 15 anyway, so it's fine. That's like- That's freezing. Don't worry about it, eh? Good luck, darling. Thanks. I'll need it. Hopefully, hopefully not, actually. The line looked like it was originally just wrapped around a rudder when we checked it on passage, but unfortunately, that was no longer the case. Really bad. What's like, happening? It's all wrapped around our, our, like, where the stern gland is, like, close to the, um, so I really, really hope we haven't put a hole in the gland and it's gonna start leaking. Or I really hope I can get it off, to be honest. Yeah. We'll see how we go. This is what you got already. Yep, that was all around the prop and the rudder. Far out. Is it cold down there? It's actually really nice. Oh, cool, that's good at least. <laughs> One positive. All right, here we go. We sailed all the way onto anchor to try and prevent it getting wrapped on our prop. But once we dropped the anchor, we didn't really feel comfortable going to sleep without reversing on the anchor to ensure it had dug in. And unfortunately, as much as we tried to do this slowly, it still ended up wrapping around our prop and shaft seal. And we knew as soon as it happened, as we heard a big clunk and the boat kind of jerked a bit. Our friend Brent on QI gave us some good advice to turn the prop the opposite direction to try and unwrap it. And it actually worked a treat. How are you guys? You doing all right? Oh, better now that you guys are here. Cheers. Cheers. After celebrating our arrival a little too hard that same night and recovering from our hangovers, it was time we stretch our legs and get some exercise after being boat bound the past week. So we decided to hike the volcano located right above our anchorage. We've made a little bit of a detour. Nice swim spot here. Oh, it looks amazing. What's the sign say? <laughs> <laughs> no dancing girls. Prohibo el paso. I won't lie to you though, all of our audio was ruined in this footage because it was pretty damn windy. And even though we used our fancy new microphones, we didn't think about the fact we'd be talking absolute rubbish between the four of us the whole time. And one another's mics would override what the other one was saying to the camera. Yes, we're still those absolute noobs that created a YouTube channel and even after two years, we're still learning. Anyway, we're hiking Montana Amarilla, which translates to Yellow Mountain named for its distinctive yellowish hue caused by the presence of volcanic minerals in its rock formations. The Canary Islands are volcanic in nature and Montana Amaria is no exception and was formed through volcanic activity millions of years ago. Don't you think it's a bit windy up there? Hey? Don't fall in. Come on. The wind's stronger than what you are. And that's not grippy either. Nala, what's this? What's this? What's this? Come on. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> it's my hat. Silly. We're leaving La Graciosa and we're gonna head down the south west, I think, side of Lanzarote. The next anchorage. Um, 
pretty much here there's like swell coming from all different directions it's a pretty windy place so we've got to pick places to get protection and like the whole uh kind of north side north side or western side of uh Lanzarote, there's no anchors whatsoever and actually swell like surf i'm just gonna uh just get out here a bit and actually see what the wind's doing before i decide to get the sails up should be downwind and we should i think we're just going to find the head sail but it's going down to like nine knots now but you can see it's gusting out there yeah it was quite a change to get used to the big rolling Atlantic swell. Seems scary, but so far, even though it's larger, it's actually more smooth and the boat handles it better than the short and sharp swell in parts of the Med. You just think like when you watch those like massive container ships getting smashed around and you're like, that must be so big if they're getting that on camera because like we've probably got two meter swells now, but you can't even, it looks like nothing. A pretty magical place. What are you doing? <laughs> Mummy's girl. Hey. With your dirty nose. A dirty bum. <laughs> In my face. quiet we're just around the marina we're gonna go find something to eat and have a little stroll around see what we can find also look at this lagoon 62 so nice and warm too and Buddha need us in pants and a normal top too hot for a jacket <laughs> So different, hey, it's well, yeah, really cool. It be... Yeah, I reckon. <laughs> but we're having Indian. <laughs> Looks good, hey? <laughs> Half the reason we came here is the, the wind was blowing from, what was it, South East? And we we were walking the direction it came. Oh, yes. Smell it from a mile away. We're walking upwind and it was blowing towards oh, us. No, no, no. <laughs> no we, we did know this place had really good reviews, but the smell just confirmed it, hey? Yeah. And now, and now the taste here. is going to confirm it, I'm sure. Bon appetit. So we just got a message from our friends to go and take a look outside to have a little look at the Sahara Desert dust that is blowing our way. And it looks insane out here. It almost looks like there's fog. So it doesn't actually look super red, especially now the sun's gone down. It doesn't have that kind of reflection on it. I've gone and taken the cushions and put them inside. And yeah, I guess we'll wake up in the morning and see what damage is done. 
It's gonna be fun cleaning this up. You actually can't even see the next island really now, and you can see it clearly before. Doesn't look as bad in camera, but see how foggy it is over there? The next island, you can just see. And that was super clear, it's pretty close, so. We just had a in the middle of the night wind switch, which we knew was gonna happen. It's come a little bit earlier. Um, and I was just watching out the window because I saw some bright lights and I was wondering if it was people awake on a boat or it was a fishing boat or whatever. And then I noticed the catamaran that was in front of our friends, Vic and Brent, started to move and it looked like it was getting closer to their boat. So I was watching it for a while and then it literally came right next to their boat. Then it kind of turned when the wind gusted and it looked like it was going to hit them. So we started trying to ring our friends to alert them. Anyway, luckily it just missed their boat and now it's like just heading out to sea so jason's tried to get the torch to like flash it in the window to alert them that they're dragging no one's realized whatsoever and then they just kept getting further and further so jason's actually gone in the tender to try and bash on the hull and let them know so just gonna check out and see what's going on so we couldn't wake up the other boat but it looks like they've hooked onto a rock or something so they're holding at the moment or they at least were but um yeah no luck waking them up so hopefully they're all good and don't drag out to sea. There's not really much more we can do. I uh, tagged on both sides of their hulls. Did you? And shone the light. Like it was pretty much in every window that I could. Yeah, so what else can we do except get a foghorn or something out? So. But as, as I was doing it, I saw the boat swing really hard, so I knew it grabbed, grabbed onto something. Yeah. Hopefully they stay there. Anyway, now we've got like major creaking going on so it's like impossible to sleep anyway so we're just gonna get the boat prepped and ready to leave and then potentially leave in an hour at three o'clock in the morning um we're supposed to be up and going at six anyway so it's only a few hours early like that who can sleep through that seriously we need a new snubber <laughs> and we're pretty sure we're just hooked onto a rock as well it's quite rocky here so it's like not not the kind of safest anchorage really to be um yeah i don't think it's we held really well but you don't trust it so much if you're going to start swinging around if we're going to come unhooked from it so turning a bit and stuff too so yeah we got the dishes to do and to get the tender up on the davits and then we'll message message our friends again and see if they're keen to go or if they're awake so we've been messaging messaging them they're keen to see if they can get back to sleep for an hour and see what happens but jace is keen to go so all right it's quarter past four and we're off we managed to get the anchor up we were hooked around a rock but we did a bit of reversing and got all over the place we got lucky we got off so we've left our friends i feel bad that we've just left we did give them a message but i think they're fast asleep so Anyway, I'm sure it'll catch up to us in a few hours. After we got up and going early that morning, I actually went back to bed for another sleep while Jace kept watch. I've always got company with one of our nap buddies and I'm not mad about it. Such good lighting this morning. Lanzaroni, a bit, bit of a rolly night last night. I kind of explained it this morning. I took a few. Oh, did you? Yeah. You explained about the catamaran? Yep. Dragging? Yep. And it woke us up at 2 a.m.? Well, the catamaran didn't, but the switch of the wind did. Switch of the wind did, yeah. When I was wrapped around a rock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, um, we had to reverse the anchor because we were caught in under a rock. So we had to go, like, reverse into the wind just to unhook it. Mm. But we managed to do it in dark without hitting any other boats. And now we're on route to what one of today's favourite anchorages. She not, thinks. No, not my favourite anchor. It's just a cool looking beach. I'm not sure what it's going to be like today, but going along the island of Fortaventura and it's like one of their famous beaches that kind of has almost like lagoon, like, sand, like a sandbar kind of thing. It looks amazing. But yeah, I don't know if we're going to have very good weather for it today. So unfortunately, we might miss out. We might just have to go straight past it. 
and then round the corner another hour to our anchorage. So we'll see how we go, but fingers crossed. Especially because we're going to get there earlier, so we actually have more time to enjoy it if it is nice. Right. It's supposed to die down, the, the wind, but I reckon we'll still have a bit of swell, it's the only problem. Well, it's not like we're staying there overnight anyway, we're just going there for, to check it out. Yeah. Now, darling. <laughs> close, aren't I, really? Yeah, we are pretty close. Once we turn this corner, we're okay. Woo! Nice. Really getting rolled around by these waves, even though it looks flat as a tack behind you on the camera. It's definitely not flat, but it's not big. It's not big, but it's pushing us because it's just on that angle. Yeah, too close to shore, to, which is um, making it bounce around. Yeah, making it, making it a bit wishy-washy. Yeah. We never regret embarking on an early morning sail. It awakens the senses, and you always feel productive, especially if it's only a short sail, and we can arrive at our next destination to enjoy the afternoon. Also, the landscape in the Canary Islands does not disappoint, so it makes for a very scenic sail. Got the shoot up, need to dry it out, and got pretty light conditions now, like 12 knots. And we got to turn in, so we're gonna be dead downwind, I'd say soon. Anyway, this is what it looks like. <laughs> oh, we're finished just trying to change sails. So now we're gonna clean all this mess up. Unfortunately, it wasn't going to be nice at that beach I talked of earlier. So we sailed straight onto our anchorage for the night. Got the kite up, because we don't want to lose against the Aussies, <laughs> even though we left two hours before them and they nearly caught up to us. That means we definitely can't lose. We already had a head start. <laughs> have a bit of structure to it and not just soft sand because there's like a road on top of it. So we actually learnt this off uh, one of our Patreons or YouTube YouTubers. comments. Yeah, YouTube viewers. So we basically tied a line to the anchor and dropped another 10 to 15 metres of chain down and then bring that line to push us to where the swell needs to be. And then we've just wrapped it around the plate, the winch, sorry. But we will- We'll clean it, it off. We will clean it off. So basically we're just trying to pull Oi! the bow of the boat into the swell, because we're going side onto it at the moment, because the wind and the swell aren't matching up. So yeah, it's working pretty well so far. Probably can't see it right now, but we are rolling, constantly rolling for like the last 48 hours. This anchorage, the last anchorage. Yeah. We need and to get on the way here. Like we just, we just don't have, we haven't had stillness in days and days. Nearly feels like we've been on passage for about three days straight. Oh yeah, it's crazy. Like how much it gets to like your back. They should do this for people that are in jail. They should just make the ground move <laughs> constantly because it would really get to people. Probably, uh, probably a small cell would get to people too. A what? A, a confined space. Yeah, it's like that kind of thing though. It's like that thing that like would mentally challenge you. Like after a certain amount of time, you just, I don't know, you just, it's different when you're on a boat and you're doing it to yourself and like you get to experience good parts as well. But yeah, it's not nice. Anyway, we're going to move to an anchorage that is hopefully protected from swell 
and then we're gonna try and go on a waiting list for the marina because it's really cheap. They're actually the ones that let you anchor out the front. It's kind of like you, you anchor out the front and you're on a waiting list. Yeah. But it's like the stupidest system. We decided to fly the cruising chute without raising the main for the first time ever to see how it would react by doing this with the downwind conditions we had. Unfortunately, we've been having a little bit of trouble lately with our furling drum, so it probably wasn't the brightest idea. And when we unfurled it, the line got wrapped and caught up in the drum. The wind suddenly picked up and we also noticed on our Navionics chart an area close by with dangerous swell. So we got quite nervous as we knew it wouldn't be easy to furl in. So we worked at untangling and trying to fell it in as fast as we could. That was a bit of a stressful situation, as if we had trouble getting it down and couldn't control the boat, those breaking waves were a little too close for comfort. back and forth behind you definitely, us. You definitely look uh, a lot more comfortable than us, but it's not too bad to roll, to be honest. Yeah, definitely. Because in a competitive like this, it's not that bad, but I'm, I'm more trying to see. lost most of our wind and it's dead behind us so we were motor sailing we were sailing and then we're motor sailing and now we've actually wrapped the head sail in for the rest of the trip probably as it only gets lighter as the day goes on i think we've got about four to five hours to go we've let little nala out to see what she would do because sometimes she can be a little menace look hello you being a good girl is that comfortable Thank you. <laughs> so cute. We have dolphins. Where? Ready? Oh! They'll be at the bow of the boat. After a few rolly nights we just had, we were pretty happy to enter the harbour at Las Palmas on Gran Canaria to see flat, calm water. We'll catch you next week for the rest of our time in the Canary Islands before leg two of the Atlantic crossing begins. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment and even share to someone you think might enjoy watching. 